In the world of professional wrestling, there is one phrase that is used quite loosely, and that's never say never. However, in the case of these songs, certain wrestlers and their actions have crossed the line enough that they are now banned from being played by the WWE. And unfortunately, there is no door to bring them back. Because I'm Kevin Callis, and here are Kevin's seven WWE entrance themes forbidden by Vince McMahon. Chris Benoit is a name that is hard to talk about. While many remember him as one of the greatest technical workers of his generation, quite possibly one of the best ever, the tragedy that occurred in June 2007 sent shockwaves not only through the entire pro wrestling community, but also the world when it was determined by authorities that Benoit, in a mentally deteriorated state, committed a double murder-suicide involving himself his wife Nancy, also known as Woman, and their seven-year-old son Daniel. The unfortunate memory of Benoit's horrific actions that fateful weekend will forever trump his accomplishments inside the squared circle as the WWE has basically erased his records and continue to pretend that the rabid Wolverine ever existed. Included in this mandate are also his two entrance themes, Rabid, composed by Jim Johnston, and Whatever, written and performed by the band Our Lady Peace. Forbidden to be played in any way, shape, or form by the WWE, the Canadian alternative rock band also went on to remove the song from their music catalog. The best way to describe Benoit is as a man who shouldn't be remembered, but cannot be forgotten. Originally scoffed at by many as cheap road warrior ripoffs, Demolition went from imitation to glory as they combined their intimidating appearance with their aggressive in-ring abilities to dominate the WWE tag team scene from the late 80s to the early 90s. Clad in studded leather and colorful face paint, Axe and Smash were accompanied by this sinister stomper by Rick Derringer that banged many heads during the demo's tag team championship reigns. Demolition were an unrivaled force to be reckoned with. That is, until Vince McMahon got his hands on the original as Demolition faded away and Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom, took over the WWE Tag Team Division and cemented themselves as the best tag team in history. Now, considering the fact that the bloody Bushwhackers are in the WWE Hall of Fame, there's little doubt that Demolition also deserves to be enshrined, but it's doubtful they will anytime soon. You see, both Axe and Smash were among 51 plaintiffs who sued the WWE regarding CTE injuries discovered later in life. The lawsuit was eventually dismissed but as you would suspect, all those involved are still considered persona non grata in Vince's eyes. Holler, if you hear me. Scott Steiner excelled in pro wrestling for over three decades, first as an innovative member of the Steiner Brothers tag team, and then as a hulking loudmouth gym rat who bleached his hair blonde and reinvented himself as an aggressive ladies man known as Big Papa Pump. Boasting an impressive resume of both tag team and single success, Big Papa Pump is not only one of the most memorable competitors and personalities in history, he is also one of the most controversial and reckless. The legendary behind Behind the scenes stories about backstage fights, drug test refusals, and near riots are fascinating to hear and show just how unpredictable Steiner could be. With zero Fs left to give, Steiner has talked so much trash about those that offend him, like the McMahons, Triple H, Hulk Hogan, and so on and so forth, that the chances of hearing Steiner's theme music again on any WWE media platform are slim and none, and Slim just left town. Despite all of this, Freak Zilla still gets a crowd reaction to this day and his in-ring expertise and incredible career cannot be ignored because Big Papa Pump is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Owen Hart's contributions to the sport of pro wrestling have recently been brought to the forefront thanks to AEW teaming up with his foundation to create the Owen Hart Cup men's and women's tournaments. Now we all know what happened over 20 years ago, but AEW is determined to preserve Owen's legacy and keep his memory alive, remembering the positive that surrounds him rather than just dwelling on his death. However, when you look at the Rockets' former employer, the WWE is basically forbidden to say a word or to honor the man who owned 
only gave his life for the sport he loved. Obviously, there have been several legal cases brought forth by Owen's widow, Martha, over his name, image, and likeness, including a wrongful death lawsuit that was settled out of court for $18 million back in November 2000. Given the grudge that Martha still rightfully holds against Vince and company, Owen isn't going into the WWE Hall of Fame anytime soon as Martha owns the rights to basically everything related to him. Owen is currently not mentioned or referenced anywhere on WWE.com. However, thankfully, his classic matches are available to watch on Peacock and the WWE Network. China's WWE legacy is quite complicated. Billed as the ninth wonder of the world, Joni Lauer achieved a new level of fame despite being a woman in a man's sport. However, China became far more famous for her slurring appearances on reality TV shows and for other questionable activities outside the squared circle before an accidental drug overdose led to her untimely death. Never mind all the backstage drama that may or may not have led to her firing, never mind her subsequent fall from grace that may or may not have been caused by it, China was one of the most influential and memorable superstars of the entire Attitude Era. And when she was found dead on April 20th, 2016, the E rushed to pay tribute to the woman who blazed a trail for the women wrestlers of today. But prior to that, she basically had been erased from the history books because of her post-WWE decisions. Along with all this also came the forbidden usage of this Jim Johnston theme that suggested we don't treat China like a woman or a man, but maybe one day we'll treat her as a Hall of Famer on her own. one can't help but wonder what might have been for the realest guy in the room, Enzo Amore. Despite having no wrestling background, the loud, brash, and definitely not politically correct Amore was hired by the WWE in 2012 and immediately paired with Big Cass. These two certified Gs and bona fide studs rose through the ranks to become one of the most popular acts on the original NXT roster. And then the next thing you know, bada bing, all their hype and charisma carried them to a memorable post wrestling Mania 32 main roster debut. However, unfortunately for Enzo, he quickly became somewhat of a social outcast in the locker room and developed a ton of heat by being his over-the-top obnoxious self. Eventually, he was released and is now banned from the WWE after a PR stunt when his attempt to hijack the 2018 Survivor Series pay-per-view backfired and bada boom, Enzo got thrown out of the room. And while Amore was worth a watch when he made his way to the ring to soft is a sin, I guess when it comes to having proper manners and respect for your colleagues, you can't teach that. Super, super, super fly. No nickname is more synonymous with sports entertainment than Superfly. And although Jimmy Snuka is a Hall of Famer who amazed audiences and inspired countless future wrestlers with his awe-inspiring aerial theatrics, you will never hear his theme song of the same name ever again on WWE television. Once one of the most beloved babyfaces of the old school 80s WWF, the controversy surrounding Snuka and the death of his former girlfriend, Nancy Argentino, will always hover like a dark cloud over his legacy. And although he was never found guilty, Superfly was arrested in 2015, 32 years after Nancy's passing, and charged with third-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. However, during a series of pre-trial hearings, Snuka's lawyer stated that the Superfly suffered traumatic brain injuries during his wrestling career, which caused severe enough damage that he was unable to stand trial for these criminal allegations. The judge agreed and dismissed all charges, deeming the native Fijian not mentally fit. And two weeks later, on January 15, 2017, Jimmy Snuka passed passed away as he had been battling stomach cancer. There will never, ever be another Snuka in all of pro wrestling, and maybe that's a good thing, brudda. So what do you think? Did we get this list right or wrong? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And go on and share the video with one of your friends who you think might also like it, because it really helps our channel grow and reach new people. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for weekly wrestling theme song content, and don't forget to follow us on social media, and we'll see you next time.